Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little. I'm here today on episode 261 of Weekly Poker Hand. This is our first week of the fifth year of this podcast, so thanks to all of you for being here. I hope you all signed up for PokerCoaching.com last week, like I asked you to do, and I hope you also shared this with your friends. So, if last week this was shared with you, if this is your first episode with us, please let me know on Twitter, at Jonathan Little. And I'll be happy to help you improve your skills at poker because that is what I'm here to do. If you improve your poker skills, you'll get lots of money. And from there, we'll work on improving your life skills to make you happy. Because at the end of the day, if all you do is play poker, well, you're probably not going to be too happy. The goal is to make you a happy, productive human. All right. Here we have a hand from a $1,000 buy-in World Series of Poker event. We're playing 5100 and a tight player with 30 big blinds opens under the gun and it folds to me and the small blind. What a nasty spot. In general, I don't do a whole lot of three betting against under the gun raisers, just for the most part. And I especially don't do that from out of position. And you may ask why? Well, if the opponent is tight and they're opening under the gun, they probably have a very strong range, right? So imagine they have aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines, eights, ace, king, ace, queen, Maybe ace-jack. In that scenario, like, ace-king is a little bit ahead, but it's not, like, way far ahead. And the problem is if I re-raise, let's say I put them all in, or let's say I make it 900 or 800, well, now they're probably only going to continue with aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, nines, ace-king, and, like, ace-queen suited, maybe ace-queen offsuit. And then I'm roughly flipping, or just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit ahead. And you really don't want to be flipping or a tiny bit ahead from out of position. So for that reason, I like calling. That keeps the opponent in with their entire range, which you know should not be too wide to start with. And it also disguises my hand a bit, because now if it comes with an ace or a king, and my opponent's sitting here with king-queen suited, or um, something like ace-queen, right, and they're dominated, and we both make top pair, now they're just certainly going to think they have the best hand, and they're going to be on the hook for a lot of money. So I like calling here in general. What would I be three-betting in this scenario with? Well, honestly, not a lot. This is an exploitative play against most of the recreational players in $1,000 buy-in tournaments, just because their under-the-gun opening ranges are often too weak, especially once I've identified them as a tight player, right? If I have identified this player as a loose, active, aggressive player, then I'm going to be way more inclined to re-raise, because then I can just re-raise and happily get all my money in. But against a tight player, that's very, very different. So we call, big blind folds, flop comes queen-jack-4, Two spades. I have the ace of spades. So if I check and the opponent bets like 400, which is probably what a lot of people do in this spot, I would probably call reluctantly. You have to understand at that point, we're putting in 400 to try to win a pot that could potentially be up to about 3,500. Uh, try to win 3,500 from, from my opponent plus the pot total. So we're getting about nine to one implied odds, which is pretty nice. We know if a 10 comes, I'm just really, really happy. If a spade comes, that's nice enough. If an ace or a king comes, that's pretty good too. So don't think we need to just be check folding here. I do understand I'm going to be beat a lot of the time when I check call, but we have a pretty solid draw. I don't think a lot of people realize how strong over cards with a gut shot straight draw to the nuts is. And um, backdoor flush draw counts as well. Over cards count. I mean, it's a pretty good hand. So you may say, um, should we check raise if our opponent bets? And I would definitely say no, because then if I check raise and the opponent goes all in, well, or if I check shove the opponent all in, what are they going to call with? They're going to call with aces, kings, queens, jacks, ace, queen, queen, jack suited if they have it, king, queen, and all of those hands beat me. I mean, sh sure, we have some equity against them, but you don't want to be getting it all in when you're just drawing really, really thin, especially in a spot where you can check call very easily. All right, turns to 10 giving me a straight, which is great. And now I have to decide, do I want to play my hand or do I want to play my range? Now, when it does go check-check on this flop, it's highly likely the opponent has ace-king or a hand like pocket tens or pocket nines or pocket eights or maybe something like ace-jack. If he has ace-jack and I bet the turn, he's definitely going to call, so that's nice. We're going to get money in the pot. But if it goes check-check on the turn, he has ace-jack, I'm going to bet the river and get called anyway. So we're probably only going to get one bet out of ace-jack, and that's pretty easy. What if he has pocket tens? Well, he's going to bet the turn. I'm certainly not going to fold. He's going to bet the river and we're going to get all the money in. So that's fine as well. What about if he has ace-queen? Well, he's probably going to bet the turn now. He probably would have bet the flop, but he, so he probably doesn't have ace-queen. But he's probably going to bet the turn. He's probably going to bet the river. So we're getting money in there too. What if he has pocket nines? Well, if I check, he may decide to bluff. 
But if I bet, he's probably just going to fold immediately. I understand he has an open ended straight draw, but most tight players realize this is not a good hand because if um, a king comes, I could easily have an ace. And if an eight comes, well, they could still be beat, right? So if they have nines or eights or eight seven suited or something like that, that just really doesn't connect here, the only way to get money in the pot is to check. So against all the made hands, I'm probably going to win roughly the same amount whether or not I bet or check. But against the garbage, the only way to get money in is to check. So I like checking. This is also a turn that should be great for my opponent, right? I mean, the most obvious checking hands are ace-king and pocket tens. So clearly this 10 nailed all that, so my opponent's going to be pretty inclined to bet if I check. So I like checking, and now the opponent bets, which is great. He bets 400. Now I have to decide, should I raise or should I call? And in this scenario, I think it's very close. Um, if the opponent just doesn't care what I have, and they're going to have a hand like ace-jack and just never fold, then clearly check-raising is great. If they have a hand like eights or eight-seven suited, then obviously they're going to fold if I raise, but they may be inclined to bluff the river if I check, because you have to imagine, what does it look like when I check-call? It looks a whole lot like I have a queen or a jack or a ten. And a queen or a jack or a ten should fold to a river bet from an under-the-gun player in this scenario. Maybe not a queen, but certainly a jack or a ten. So this is a dicey spot where obviously I want to raise this hand. I want to get all the money in, but I'm not sure it's going to be practical because whenever you raise in this scenario, if your opponent's good, they're going to realize you just must have a really good hand because they should have a really good hand a lot of the time. And therefore, if you're still jamming, well, you must have something pretty great too. Um, if we are going to raise, by the way, I think we need to go all in. And the reason I think we need to go all in is because if our opponent does have two pair set, I want to get it all in immediately because imagine the river's a... Eight of spades, and the opponent has pocket tens. But now I was just not going to put any money in. And for all I know, he may not put any money in on an ace, a king, a nine, an eight, or a spade. But he'll definitely just call it off immediately. Same thing if he has queen ten suited or jack ten suited for two pair. Um, he's probably going to call a shove, but he will likely not bet on the scary rivers. So if I am going to raise, I definitely want to go all in. And I think, after I've thought this over, I think it's probably just the best play. Especially in a $1,000 tournament where the opponents are not so concerned with the range you're jamming with. Like right here, if I'm jamming, my range should like literally be ace-king. And what else? Something like eight-seven of spades? Maybe ace-high ace, ace high of spades? Maybe king-high of spades? But even then, like, am I calling king-eight of spades from the small blind? No. So it has to be ace-x of spades would be the jamming hands. So I would jam ace-king and, and uh, ace-x of spades. But a lot of people just don't care about that, right? They just pop their money in with their two pair. So I think I should shove. I decided to call, though, which I think is the second best play. If I am going to continue playing in this manner, I think calling is fine. River's a jack, which is pretty rough. Obviously, I'm checking. I mean, this, this is a horrible card for my hand, for sure. And in terms of whose range is better for, it's probably kind of neutral. I certainly have lots of two pairs here. This time it goes check-check, though, which means I'm going to win. And this is a bummer. Why is this a bummer? Well, it's a bummer because I had the nuts against the end of the gun player and I got no money in the pot. Um, so this always feels a little rough when this happens because it's hard to get money in the pot when you're playing out of position. Now, of course, when you flat ace king from out of position, you're not thinking I'm going to make a straight. You're thinking usually I'm going to make top pair and top pair is a really great hand to check call down with. But in these scenarios, maybe I'm just supposed to go ahead and just raise the turn. I probably should have, especially in a $1,000 tournament. As the opponents play better and better, you have to be a little bit more cautious with raising in spots where you clearly do not have a range advantage, and I probably don't on this turn, um, just because it looks really, really odd, and also it's really hard to be balanced, and you're just going to run into the nuts a lot, which is a big problem. But against um, lower stakes players, just in general, I don't think they're going to be making big folds with two pairs or sets, and um, for that reason, I think I should have just shoved. So I messed this one up a bit, and... Let my opponent keep some chips some amount of the time. To be fair, he probably just had like ace 10 and was never putting any money in the pot anyway. So maybe the only way to get money in the pot was to let him bluff. But when the river came a jack, he's like, well, don't need to bluff ace 10 anymore. Maybe he had pocket eights. Maybe he thought, oh, don't need to bluff the pocket eights anymore because it's too easy for me to have a jack because certainly I have a lot of jacks in my range. But they're just, um, they're going to be a lot of ace jack, king jack type hands. So that's going to be it for today. I want to thank you all for being here. Again, I'm looking forward to five more years of Weekly Poker Hand, I imagine I'll keep doing it. These are fun, they're not too hard to make, and I know all of you enjoy it. Someone told me just the other day that 
He shared Weekly Poker Hand with one of his friends in his home game, and then now everyone in his home game listens to Weekly Poker Hand. It's probably going to be a relatively tough home game. Sorry about that. Guess that happened. Shout out to that home game. Um, so yes, if you did not join Poker Coaching last week, go do that right now. It's completely free. No credit cards required. You have no reason not to. And also, if you did not share Weekly Poker Hand with one of your friends last week, go do that. That would be very beneficial for me. It would help me out a lot and I would appreciate it. Also, click like, subscribe, share, retweet, whatever buttons you can press. If you're listening on iTunes, leave a, leave a comment, not a comment, a review. We'll continue grinding it out. Have fun, good luck, and I'll talk to you next week. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little. I hope you're enjoying the Thanksgiving Day Marathon. Hope you're learning a lot and having a great time. Let me take a second to tell you about one of the unique features of PokerCoaching.com where every month students can submit hands and then one of my coaches or myself will review those hands in a live webinar or in a video. And this is essentially like you getting high-end private coaching from the absolute best players in the world. I know just Last month, Tristan Wade and Matt Affleck, two of the best players in the world, both reviewed poker coaching members' hands. And that allows them to improve their skills rapidly. So, in addition to all of the other benefits of PokerCoaching.com, including over 650 interactive hand quizzes, 20 video classes, 40 challenge webinars, and 30 live coaching webinars, you have the opportunity to get your hands reviewed and essentially have a private coaching session with the best players in the world. So do not miss out on this excellent opportunity to get a membership to pokercoaching.com at a significantly discounted rate just for Black Friday. Also, one cool bonus of poker coaching is that some of these students, we actually back them in live tournaments of their choice because I realize that everyone does not have the money for private coaching, which can be really expensive, and $1,000 buying live tournaments, but I'm happy to help all of you get those things just for being a member. So for your chance at that and for full access to pokercoaching.com, head over right now to pokercoaching.com slash Black Friday, sign up, and I'll see you in the next webinar.